Hey, hey, I hope everyone is good and has had a good day. Good Saturday so far. So um, just to give a little bit of an intro into this video, I wasn't quite sure what to do for YouTube this week. And I thought this morning I had a few bits of work to do. So I started work uh, after I walked the dogs at about like half nine-ish, caught up with my clients before the weekend. And then did a couple of extra things I had to do. Also watched Arkan, which was a really, really good uh, cross country course. If anyone watched it, a bit of drama at the end for uh, the Brits and the Kiwis. And then I went to the gym, did my sessions. I'm actually going to show you guys what I did. And then I am going to give you a mobility run through. So this mobility, it's so sunny, could be done as like a pre-workout, a pre-ride mobility. It could just literally be something you use as like a daily flow to switch off. It can also be used post-training as I showed you. So I'm going to show you what I did my training now. And then I'm going to run you through the mobility workout. So enjoy. And any questions on this, let me know. So my session today started with some warm up to go into snatch work. So this is just some barbell work to get me warmed up, getting into the squat pattern, doing some hip hinging to warm my hamstrings up and also just getting used to getting that bar overhead. So I was doing two reps for uh, basically like as heavy as I could and I was just building the weight as I went along. Um, I think I finished out at about 35 kilos. This is my first attempt at 35 and I messed it up and I failed it. Um, but then uh, I did get another like three sets. So this is snatching has been a um, Olympic lifting movement that I've been working on for a while. It's not easy. Um, it's not something that I would coach my clients through. Um, I've trained for quite a long time and it's movements that I want to learn. Uh, but it has been a very slow work in progress. But I got there eventually and then moved into some strength work. Into sandbag lunges next. I don't actually know why I like these, but I really enjoy this exercise. And obviously single leg work for all riders is really important. The sandbag on your back really, really gets you working through your core as well, because you've got to engage your core to keep your body weight upright. Otherwise you're just gonna fold forward like a sack of potatoes. So if you've got a med ball, anything like that weight, you could do this with on the back of your neck. Finishing off with a bit of arm. So this is working my triceps, just to give them a little bit of work to finish. And then this is a really nice ab exercise. So it's called a flutter kick. Really Really similar to a dumbbell so lying on the ground do not let your back lift a nice slow controlled movement this is sped up um, but that's certainly got my abs working hey guys i hope everyone is having a good weekend so i wasn't quite sure what i should bring you this week on my channel and then um it's saturday morning i've been to the gym was meant to do content uh, for YouTube yesterday, but I got a bit behind. And then I actually thought at the gym, why don't I do a bit of like a cool down mobility routine for you? So like I said, I've just trained. So this is gonna be my uh, cool down. This could be just like a mobility flow you take yourself through daily. It could be used pre-workout, post-workout, um, and also before riding. Obviously the lying exercises are gonna be a little bit harder to do pre-riding, but there's lots of things you can do standing um, and moving before you get on will massively, massively help to mobilize you and give you, you know, a better, body to ride with. So what I'm going to focus on today is primarily lower bodies, quite a lot of hip back areas. Um, I've personally ridden a bit more than I have lately in the last like seven, eight days and I'm finding that my inner thighs are quite tight um, and just generally feeling a bit of tightness through my lower back. So I'm going to keep it all really basic, run through probably like 15 minutes of stretching um, and this is something that you can do at home. So enjoy, all you need is a mat, um, find a space. I personally like to go outside. Um, and let's just start really nice and easy with some cat cows into rock back. So we're flexing and extending through our thoracic region. So try to keep it in the upper back, not dump into the lower. Two of those. And then just sit back onto your heels. Hey boy. And then come forward. Sit down into your heels. Okay, and again. So we'll do five rounds of these. And if your toes are quite tight, you can stay on your toes like I am now. For me, I have very, very tight feet, especially my left foot. So that's a little bit painful. So obviously just adapt to how you feel. Having a dog as well is absolutely obligatory, isn't it, Zip? Nice deep breathing the whole time as well. Flex up through that back, push your hands into the air.
calf kneeling and we're going to go into a little bit of a hip flexor pose so arm over and you should really get a deeper stretch through the front of your hip flexor you can reach over a little bit i like to push my weight into this hip and i get a really deep stretch nice deep breaths again and then what you're going to do is just take it down onto your heel either use your hands to stabilize you if you're stable enough you can go all the way back onto your uh, heel again for me like i can't keep my toes flexed into the ground i have to let my toes fold away and then we're just going to rock through a few rotations of these So this is really working hip flexors. If you're tight through your hip flexors, into your abdominals, into your thighs, you should be really feeling a pull down this back leg. And then of course, if you're tight in the hamstring, you are really, really gonna feel this one. The more you flex your toe towards you as well, the deeper the stretch is gonna be. So obviously you just want a pull in these movements. It's not just flexibility, like we're moving through an active range of motion. So not just trying to stretch as much as possible. Again, if you guys want to do more reps or like set it for time, that's fine with mobility. There's not really like a right number of reps to do. It's just based off what you feel you need, what feels right. And when you start to feel the muscles and joints kind of like limbering up, giving a little bit, I would say that's probably your cue. Take a bit of a breather. Okay, we're going to go on to the other side. Oh, and again, that one's tight for me. Really tight. It's the same thing again, really reaching out. You can go both hands, whatever's comfortable for you. And again, this time I'm getting the stretch on right hip flexor. Just rocking back again. Alternative movements. Now we've opened up our hips a little bit. I want to go back to our back. So I'm going to do a thread the needle. So this hand's going in front of me. I'm just going to take my other hand under, hold it for a little bit. You'll get a bit of a pull through your back. You'll probably feel it as well a bit through the back of your shoulder. <laughs> Got a pugging coming. But you don't want to, again, take it past the point where you're just feeling a bit of a pull, okay? So if you can walk your hand out further, this hand, every rep, that's cool. But again, don't force it. I'm actually super, super tight in my back today. <sighs> These feel good, but quite a lot of tightness in there. One more. I actually typically do these left than right normally, but um, I'm not really sure why I'm doing it this way. And again, this side. And it's funny, that side's much, much looser for me. It's nowhere near as tight as my left. My right even, actually. I guess that makes sense because I'm right-handed. And again, one more time. Okay, now we're going to go into a little bit of downward dog. Downward dog is always one that you need to adapt a little bit to you. So in the quadruple position, just push your weight onto your toes and you're pushing your hips up to the sky. If you just want to hang out here, that's cool. You might find that your hamstrings or your calves are very tight. So I would personally have a little pedal. If you need to move your toes further back to give yourself a bit more room, do so. We're just going to do a few pedals, whatever feels right, and you will notice quite quickly that the um, calves loosen off and then dropping down into cobra. So all you're doing is dropping your thighs onto the floor, squeezing your scapulas together, and you should feel a bit of an open up in your chest. Now, if you've got lower back issues, this just might be too much. So you can either bring it up into a plank, but that's going to get quite hard work. So if you need to, just drop back into that reach back. And then into that, to be fair, I need a bit more back focus, so I'm actually going to stick with reach backs today. So again, just nice deep breaths. Just a bit of a pedal. Really push your weight into your hands as well. And then when you're ready, come down onto your knees, sink back into that reach back. Obviously, we started with reach back at the start, but you should now be noticing that you can get a little bit deeper. And again, up. I love this when you really, really push your hands, weight into your hands, you feel such good stretch through your shoulders. And again, think back. So we're just going to stick with five reps of everything. What I would typically do if it was my own mobility flow or if I was making a mobility flow for a client, it normally entails like 
somewhere between four to eight exercises depending on what they need like there's no right number um, and also depending how much time they have and how much they want to go through but I would always suggest going through minimum obviously of one round of everything but probably going through two rounds of, of everything and if it helps you maybe just set like a timer 60 seconds uh, on the clock give yourself like 10 seconds to transition into the next movement um, and just time it rather than having to count reps because we obviously want you to really like relax and again like if you can keep on your toes that's cool but if you need to adapt adapt but you really want to be able to relax into these positions okay so we're going to come standing in a minute but before we come standing i want to do 90 90 so definitely hands on the ground for this one sit on your bum and let your right knee go outward and your left knee fall inward now you might not be able to get to the floor the idea is that both legs make roughly a 90 degree angle um, and you don't have to have your hands on the floor but i would because otherwise you might find yourself shuffle bumming you're literally just going to keep your feet on the floor turning left to right if you want to increase the stretch come down onto your arms and on this butt cheek you say the one that's left leg i'm on my left side the bottom leg you're really really going to feel a deep stretch coming up and again it just helps like we're trying to work on your mobility loosen off the muscles we're not trying to you know get you moving without using your hands that like you don't need to make mobility difficult so if you don't need your hands behind you to support like you can just literally bring it over but like i said you might end up halfway across the room pretty quickly when you do that and nice deep breaths i can really really feel my left glute i love this one because it really really gets in i've just worked my legs quite a lot in the gym as well i'm going to show you guys what i did in the gym Okay, so yeah just doing a little bit of standing because it's probably quite hard work depending on your level of fitness but when you are always on your hands like it is quite a lot so just a little bit of posterior chain work we're just going to do some roll downs so really bring your chin to your chest roll down through your back roll down roll down and just keep your legs like kind of nicely straight obviously don't lock your knees out nice deep breaths up and we're just going to roll it back up okay so again we'll just stick with five the dogs are chasing birds nice deep breath if you're tight in your hamstrings and also if you haven't got that much um mobility in your uh hips um then you're really you're gonna probably feel this one and you might not be able to get to the ground so don't worry like you don't have to get to the ground or to your toes just go to here like wherever you feel a pull like i said at the start we're not trying to rip a muscle we're just trying to work through a good range of motion so this is a little bit of a mixture between like stretching and mobility but that is kind of like what i like to do okay so what we're going to do next is uh what i call the windmill i don't actually know if it's called a windmill really hits the inner thighs and it gets you moving through the thoracic so your thoracic should be able to rotate should be able to uh, extend and it should be able to flex as well so this just gets you moving nicely and it gets you moving laterally which is something we don't spend a huge amount of time in my ground's a little bit unlevel so i'm just going to move myself so we're standing feet like normal width apart you're just going to shift your weight to one hip and rotate up and we're just going to go whoa side to side I think I'm standing a little bit too narrow, yeah. Okay, so go wide enough, and we're just going to rotate. I'm double jointed or hypermobile at my elbow, so that's why my arms look very odd. But you are just rotating through the inner thigh, and then you're rotating through the torso, okay? I think do it's just going to be a little bit of um hip to open up um we haven't spent a huge amount of time on the adductors either so actually we're going to do a tiny bit of adductors to finish off as well so just stepping forward if you need to hold something then do this isn't a lunge as such it's just getting this back leg straight reaching up so it's a really similar movement to what we did in your warrior pose step it back whoa and again so you don't have to get this knee all the way to the floor it's just feeling a pull through here 
spending a lot of time obviously focusing on the hips because we spend a lot of time with our hips closed when we're sitting um, in flexion and that is not how we are designed. I don't know why I'm so wobbly today. I'm really wobbly. It's quite windy, but... Okay, so for me, my back hip's actually getting a bit tight, so I'm just going to drop it back down into a hip, a warrior pose to finish off. You can adjust as you want, okay? So last stretch we're going to do, exercise, is going to be what I call a to gait. So this knee on the floor, this leg is going away from you. You must keep this leg straight and the foot on the floor, okay? I'm going to try and show you from like side on, otherwise it's going to be hard for you to see. So from here, you should feel a stretch in your inner thigh. If you need to use like a foam roller, something like that, um, a chair out in front of you, do so. But if you can reach the ground, then do. And again, this leg that's away, we're going to sit onto our toe and we're just going to push our hips back into it as much as we can, get a pull there and then hold and that's it, okay? Nice deep breaths. Coming forward, and again, we're just going to do five. If you want, you can actually add a bit more of a challenge to this. So when you come up, you can come up and come into an overstretch, but you do really get a much more intense stretch in that inner thigh. So I think I actually prefer to keep it in the reach back position, okay? Again, nice deep breaths. I think that's five. I'll just show you what it looks like front on. So I'm on the back of my toe here. And then I am just sitting back. Oh, my right's way tighter again. And your knee might be a little bit of a restriction on this as well. So again, it will make it easier if your toes are like flat in line with the floor rather than trying to stay on your toe. So adjust to that if you need to. And if you do get a pull in your knee, just stop at that point. Don't force yourself to go any further back. And we're just going to do five. Okay, and that is it. Typically, after a workout, I would probably do some uh, static stretches, so like holding positions, um, things like stretching off my inner thighs, stretching off my quads, my glutes, my uh, hamstrings. But there's nothing wrong with doing a bit of like mobility post session as well. Um, I always, always, always stretch off, always encourage my clients to as well, um, just to relieve the muscles and it just helps, you know, uh, de delay DOMS, not allow DOMS to happen. So muscle soreness. And if you are quite immobile, it is something that will really help and go a long way and helps get you injury free as well. So I do highly suggest spend a bit of time doing your mobility and doing your flexibility. Um, that is it. It's Saturday afternoon now. Um, I'm going to be fully transparent. I'm about to go and eat a pizza. Then I'm going to go and uh, ride this afternoon. Got a few other bits to be doing. Edit this, for example. Um, and then I'm actually going to go and do some ragwort picking because, yeah, you know, super exciting time of year. So I hope you guys all have an epic weekend. I hope this is helpful. And yeah, let me know in the comments if it was.